Happy New Year. Oh my goodness, 2023. What's it gonna be? We'll have to wait and see. Okay, okay, I made that up. Two years ago, I had a plan, well, a little more than two years ago. So two years ago, I recorded the first video. I had a plan that I wanted to complete my unfinished projects, yeah? Raise your hand if you got some unfinished projects. <laughs> okay, I know. Some of y'all thought I forgot about it, didn't you? You thought I forgot. Hey, 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 it's Terry, Virginia's daughter. How's everybody doing? Hopefully your holidays were well. You've got a great start off to the new year. I wanted to start this year off by talking about my unfinished projects. I knew that it was something that I had to get done to move forward. For some reason, I didn't, you know, discard them. I mean, I had collected these projects over some years and for some reason I held on to them. So I was like, you know what, Terry? You need to finish it. It was divine intervention is what it was because it became a springboard for me to do other things. Eight rounds, seven projects per round. That's 56 projects that I recorded to complete that first year. Let's talk about where I am today. So I completed five projects from round one and seven projects, uh, round two, three, four, five, and six for a total of 40 projects. I have round seven and round eight that I still have to complete. Round seven, there's some casualties from that round. So there are two items that won't be completed. I'm gonna have to pitch them. And then round eight, I will complete all seven. I'm excited about round eight. I have 12 projects that I need to complete to get this done. So the goal is to have these two done, these 12 items done by the end of March. So when it's all said and done, I will have 54 projects completed. Let's talk about the round you haven't seen yet, shall we? I will start with this Tracy Reese Vogue 1126. <laughs> you remember this? Oh my goodness. Uh, I, I show you the line drawings. This is the back. I have like a ton of notes and uh, things like that on there. But I started this project and I'm trying to think there's 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 a detail here. The jacket was wasn't bad at all, but the skirt, I don't think I like the way the skirt was turning out. Let me get that. Here's the jacket. I like the way this is turning out. I mean, look at that. I like this. Yeah, I think this is going to be really cute still. It I think I made the size 16, so I don't know what the fit is going to be like, but let me try this on. The skirt, oh my goodness, the skirt, some of the points just, I, you know, I'm really particular. And I don't know, um, this is that there's some angles here. Tracy Reese was kind of known for uh, her angles in sewing, I think. At least I remember having a couple patterns that, you know, reflected that. But it has a little kick pleat vent something. I'll look at the real name for that in the back. And, you know, the skirt has this little detail here. Now that I look at it, it's not terrible, but I took issue with the way it was lining up. I have all the pieces. The lining, yeah, yeah. This is a sample of the lining. I thought this would be so pretty. This is gonna be the lining for the jacket. And I'm not sure if the skirt calls for a lining or not. Let's see. Semi-fitted line jacket, uh, semi-fitted line skirt. So the skirt and jacket are both lined. Funny story about this fabric. I used it to make a slip dress to go with another dress and then realized I wanted it. So I actually started the lining. I think this is the skirt lining. I actually wanted to use this as the lining for this. And so I ordered some more. I found it on Etsy. I got the original fabric at Joanne Fabrics, but I ended up buying the second cut on Etsy. So I was happy about that. The second one is this jumpsuit here. It's um, Zambia Rhodes. It's Vogue 1617. 
Love this jumpsuit. I've made it once already and I was so thrilled I wanted to make it again. I had this autumn kind of, I just love this fabric. Oh my goodness, it's like, um, oh that's probably the bottom, let's see. Charmeuse fabric, this is a leg of the pants, yeah. And you know, the, the jumpsuit has a couple interesting features, I remember, because when I made it the first time, I don't know, there was a person that I was following on IG that had mentioned, you know, good luck with this one because it's a little complicated. But I loved it. Now, I messed around and stitched something up wrong. I think I stitched maybe the pants wrong or something and had to end up taking it out. And I was just like, you know what? Forget it, forget it, forget it. I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it and never went back to it. And then I kind of coupled it with this fabric. And to be honest, I don't, I'm not sure how I mixed and matched this, but I love mixing prints and it'll be a surprise. The fourth project is a kimono that I was making for my daughter in love. And it is out of this red velvet stretch knit. She doesn't know it, so if she sees this video, she'll be getting it. But this fabric is the fabric that she used in her uh, decor for her wedding. So at the end of, you know, when they got married and everything, she said, you know, I want you to have this. This is all the fabric that was draped around. It was beautiful. So their colors were like navy and this maroon, this burgundy, I'll say burgundy color. So I got all this fabric, you know, some in pieces, some in regular cuts, like squares, rectangles, some not so regular, some big pieces, some small pieces. So I said, I'm gonna make her a kimono. And I got this trim, which I love from Joanne Fabrics, I'm sure. I'm not sure which pattern I use, but a kimono is a kimono. If I figure it out, I'll put it up. It looks like this, is this a rounded edge? Yep. It is a rounded edge, so I can almost tell you, I probably know which one it is already. I mean, and you can see where I had to piece the fabric together. Yes, but you see that whole, I'm not even sure how that happened. I got discouraged by two things when it came to this project. One was this hole right here. And one, I didn't pay attention to the direction of the fabric, like the pile, you know what I mean? And it might not matter. I mean, it might not matter. I'll see if it does or not. She won't care and I won't care. I'd wear it, you know what I mean? But I like it. It's very kind of heavy. I thought about putting a patch, like an applique over this in the back and maybe putting some type of embroidery or patch on the front to kind of balance it out, maybe up here or up here. So I'm excited to finish this. She'll be excited. I hope she doesn't watch this video. The fifth project is a Borda coat pattern. It's a PDF pattern. It is a trench coat and I wanted a black wool trench. And so I cut this out and I wanted to have some embroidery on it. I had bought extra fabric. This is a very nice wool blend from Joanne Fabrics that I got on clearance, but it was still like $20 a yard or something like that. And I remember the first couple of pieces that I did didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. That's as far as I got. I just started playing with the embroidery part of the project and never got past that part. I have all of my pieces, excuse me, and I'm gonna make that coat. I'm gonna finish it. So let me see, that's two, three, four, right? Two, three, four, that's five. The last two projects, one of them is just an easy men's sit-in sleeve t-shirt, tab front included. This is a stretch and sew pattern. I was making this for my son. I don't see the fabric though, let's see. Hmm. Some place I have it, it's a blue jersey knit and I think I was gonna color block it with white. So when I find that, I'll let you know. And then the last project from this round is this jacket <laughs> that I was making back in the day. I took an old leather coat and you know added these leather details on it and it still has the pins in it. Like that's the worst thing you can ever do. I was experimenting with hair canvas and so this is all hair canvas here. And there's a layer of fleece in here as well. So it's this outer fabric, it's a layer of fleece and then it's this fabric. And I, I don't know, I know I had to put some kind of lining in there. I don't know what I was thinking, but yeah, let's try this on. I will reference the pattern. It's warm, oh my goodness. 
the reason I stopped is because the casing is on the outside. I do remember that much. And I'm like, oh, I don't like that. Uh, no, it's on the inside. My bad. <laughs> the casing is on the inside here. And it was just, I don't know, it was thick. You know, and then looking at this, it looks like I wasn't going to add a lining because the casing would have to be on top of the lining. So was I going to leave this like this? And then finally, we have what could be called round 10. This is the kids round. And to be honest with you, I'm not thrilled about finishing this. I will complete it because I said I was going to. But if this can be done by the end of the year, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> in 2016, I became a grandmother for the first time. And then again in 2019 and then again in 2021. Look how cute these are. Oh my goodness. And I don't even know. I don't, well, you know what? To be honest with you, the three-year-old could probably wear these now because she's tiny. The one thing that I found out about sewing kids' clothes is I always thought that it would be too big. and I ended up making them too small. I remember when our oldest granddaughter was born, I made all these cute little clothes and they revealed them at the baby shower and she couldn't wear none of them. Anyway, this is just a conglomeration, I will say, of fabric that I had left over from projects. I made a dress out of this particular print and I had some left over and I thought it would make a cute, like a onesie, I think it was, or something, I'm not sure what that is. This fabric here, I actually made a top out of. So these are really remnants, you know what I mean? So I didn't, I wouldn't feel bad about, I would kinda, cause I could just donate this stuff. I actually made a dress out of this fabric here, color blocked, it was a color block. This is like a gingham print. I made it was like purple and pink. This was a fabric that I experimented with. Um, I didn't make anything out of it that you've ever seen, but you know, it's a remnant as well. I used this. Oh, I used to love this. Now this is a hat and I might wear this shoe, <laughs> but I made a dress out of this that I showcased on pattern review. This is an actual sweater that I started. I made a wrap dress out of this fabric. Isn't that kind of cute? So I think I do want to finish this stuff, but it's not priority. It's not priority. This is something I was making up, I can tell you. So I really like these shoes on here, boots and shoes. And um, yeah, I think I have more of this fabric. This is a dress that, oh, here's that fabric that I said you probably hadn't seen. I don't know what I was doing. This this fabric, I, you know, I had some stuff that I used it. What did I make out of this? Like a shirt. So it was a shirt that I entered into a contest that I actually ended up winning. Yeah, so that's it. So far, that's it. I make it through these projects and I will be where I want it to be with my unfinished projects that I started two years ago. So where are you? Do you have unfinished projects that you have to complete? Let me know in the comments. Have you made a resolution or I don't want to say resolution. Have you thought about completing your unfinished projects this year? Have you, you know, decided that you're gonna do two every month or once a month or you don't care about them? Let me know how you feel about unfinished projects. And until next time, take care.